I had the great good fortune to be on the uh, formal delegation uh, to the first Geneva conference, the first summit conference. Uh, we were very uneasy about how to deal with that, and uh, uh, the Soviet Union had been so uh, disagreeable over the years until Stalin died that we didn't know what to do. But Eisenhower is a diplomatic man, and he was willing to go to Geneva. I was his intelligence advisor. I briefed him and uh, Andy Goodpaster and other staff, including Foster Dulles, every morning, early in the morning. Uh, we were able to give them something that uh, was not too easy to get, uh, information about the rumors, the nuances of the Soviet thinking about the summit conference. I had, a, of course, direct contact with the CIA station chief in Switzerland, and he came down every night to meet me in a nightclub, and we uh, had to look at a lot of uh, dancing girls, but that was not too bad, and we stayed up until 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and. Uh, I debriefed him of what he had just re collected information during that day, and I was able to give it about three hours later, after not much sleep, uh, to Andy Goodpaster and, in some cases, to the president. And could you? This was the uh, uh, known as the uh, the Open Skies uh, uh, summit, and I wondered if you could just give us. This was Ike's little surprise. For that's the right. Russian, the that's Olive right. Branch, uh, Right. concept, and uh, uh, maybe you could talk about how that went over with the Russians, how yeah. Eisenhower yeah. dealt with the Russian response. Yeah. Well, it was clear that uh, the people we call Bulge and Krush, Bulganin and Khrushchev, uh, were the, the, the chief honchos and that Khrushchev was the dominant one. Of course, Marshal Zhukov was there, and he was an old uh, friend of Eisenhower's. They all clustered around Eisenhower as if he were a god, practically. Uh, he was a foot taller than any of them, and uh, they just admired him a great deal. On the other hand, they were trying, clearly Khrushchev particularly, was trying to soft-soap him, to get him to um, be uh, more uh, sympathetic with Soviet policy, which was not very good then, as it was not in Stalin's time. Uh, Ike had an idea which, if it had come off, would have been an excellent idea. Uh, it was to use our reconnaissance aircraft. It was, in fact, probably going to be the U-2, although no one knew about the U-2 at that time, uh, to uh, have exchange overflights to show both the Soviet Union and uh, the Europeans that uh, we could discover exactly what the deployments and military forces were, so no one would be taken by surprise. There would be no surprise attack, which we were all worried about. Well, uh, it was extraordinary to me, as I stood in the uh, corridor just outside the, the chamber, it was a closed executive meeting with uh, uh, Eisenhower and the other principals. Uh, Eisenhower came out. Uh, obviously distressed, because he had offered this really quite sensible uh, open skies proposal for mutual uh, reconnaissance, and Khrushchev turned it down cold. He said, uh, this is just a, a, a way of spying on the Soviet Union. We will never tolerate that. We have to protect our own society. And of course, I think what Khrushchev really was saying is that my military people will get damn mad at me if uh, uh, they are not allowed to spy abroad, but are also spied on in the Soviet Union. It was a it was a disaster uh, for Eisenhower in a sense. It was his idea. He was told by the Air Force it would be a good idea, and he was convinced of it. But he tried it as sort of his own uh, little ploy, his own little gambit and uh, Khrushchev really dumped on it in a brutal way. It showed that Khrushchev, while he was a, a clever and manipulative man, was also a very tough guy, as we later discovered in the Cuba Missile Crisis of 1962, when uh, he uh, really double-crossed uh, Jack Kennedy.